Welcome back to Tech Mimic, where you can simply view, imitate, replicate, and get on with your day. Today, we're going to run a Windows Virtual Machine in Beehive on FreeBSD. In this example, I will use Windows 10, but this will work for Windows 11 just as well. My test system is simply not heavy enough on resources and specifications, and that's why I had to go for Windows 10. This video is a follow-up to the earlier video, how to set up and configure Beehive in FreeBSD, step by step, where we have installed and configured Beehive from scratch and then ran two virtual machines, one for FreeBSD and one for Linux, and in that case Debian. Both of these VMs were purposely installed without a graphical user interface. Before continuing with this video, allow me to suggest that you watch that video first so that you have an idea what's going on here. A link is in the description for your convenience, as well as the various links used during the research of this video. Because Windows requires graphical output, we will need to make a few changes compared to the text-only VMs. Also, you could use this exact method to connect to a FreeBSD or Linux virtual machine with a desktop manager for graphical output. Just a quick recap. The Beehive data store is configured and located in forward slash VM, where there are the various general configuration directories, and then the two directories for the Debian and the FreeBSD VMs that hold the VM-specific configuration files log files and the virtual disk files. The command vm list shows that both VMs are stopped at the moment. And as stated, if you need some help with this, the details are in the earlier video mentioned, and I will leave it like this going forward. The Beehive-firmware package is required to run UEFI-based virtual machines like Windows 10. Install it with the command pkg install beehive-firmware. But no need to install it this time, it was actually already installed earlier. Note that I'm performing everything while being logged on as a regular user, and that I'm using the sudo command whenever I make a configuration change. Of course, you can just log in as a root and run it all from there. To connect to the graphical output of the virtual machine, Beehive is using the VNC protocol. VNC stands for Virtual Network Computing, and it is used to let you control another computer over the network, or local, like in this case, for remote administration. A well-known VNC viewer is TigerVNC. Install it with the command pkg install tigervnc-viewer. This will also add the Tiger VNC viewer to the menu structure. In this case, I'm using the XFCE desktop manager, where it is now visible in the internet group. But you should be able to find it easily in any other desktop manager or environment. We will get back to some of the connection options later on. Close Tiger VNC for now. Also, it will be convenient later on to be able to start this program quickly, so we won't miss the boot screen options. And you can do so by typing in the terminal VNC viewer space ampersand. This will start the application for you to interact with and then continuous processing in the background. The prompt will be returned to you once Tiger VNC closes. Now let's continue by configuring the Windows Virtual Machine and then the installation. You will recall that the various configuration templates are stored in forward slash vm forward slash dot templates. The Windows template is simply called windows.conf. Let's display the contents and have a look. The defaults are the UEFI bootloader, graphics and mouse are enabled, and there will be two CPUs and two gigabytes of memory. Disk and network configuration we can leave default for now too, just like the disk type and the disk name of disk0.img. And at the end of the file there is a message about the local time. You can make any changes directly to the template, so it will be used for all future virtual machines, but I'm going to leave this and then make individual changes later on. Time to create the Windows VM. Type the command 
VM create dash T windows and then the name of the virtual machine. The option dash T specifies the template file to be used, in this case windows. The list of VMs will now show the new VM Win10 with a bootloader of UEFI, 2 GB of memory and it is currently in the stopped state. A dedicated VM directory was also created. Containing the virtual disk, log file, and configuration file. Notice that the default size of the virtual disk is 20 GB. If you want this to be different, I will explain how to do that later. Now let's say that you want 4 GB instead of 2 GB of memory. You can directly edit the VM's configuration file, in this case win10.conf, but there is a dedicated command for this sort of thing. VM, configure, then the name of the VM and that will directly open the configuration file of the machine specified for editing. Change the memory from 2 to 4. Also, let's make another configuration change. While we are here, graphics underscore res equals double quote 1920 x 1080 double quote. This will specify the default resolution of your virtual machine. Of course, this is completely optional. You can also just leave it and then see how it looks in your case. After you have made the changes, exit the editor and save the changes. Because this is the VI editor, type escape, colon, W, Q, exclamation mark. The increased memory is now visible in the output of the VM list command. And of course the underlying configuration file is now updated too. Now let's say that you don't want 20 GB but 40 GB. As the size for the virtual hard disk, you can change this during the creation of the VM by adding the dash S option and then specifying the size in GB. For example, dash S 40 G. Now that the VM placeholder and the configuration are there, we can continue with the actual installation. At the moment the command vm iso shows us that there are just the iso files for FreeBSD and Debian. The vm iso command is just listing the contents of forward slash vm forward slash dot iso. All of the installation images or dot iso files are by default kept in the dot iso directory of the vm data store. This is not needed, they can be anywhere and you can use an existing image file, but we are keeping it simple here. Now download and add the Windows ISO to this directory so it is available in the ISO list. A link to the Microsoft Software Download website is in the description of this video for your convenience. This will take you to the download page for Windows 10 and then the 2023 update version 22H2. This is a link to the official Microsoft page where you can download a multi-edition disk image ISO file that can be used to install Windows 10. Now start the VM and the Windows installation from the .iso file with the command vm install, then the name of the virtual machine, and then the full path to the iso file. The only output you will get is that the VM is starting, then the location where the guest was found, and the line booting with a couple of dots. VM list shows that the Win10 VM is now in the locked state. And in case you now start to worry what is going on here, keep calm, we just need to connect to the graphical output of the VM that is now spinning in the background with the earlier installed Tiger VNC program. Note the column called VNC. Here there is displayed 0.0.0.0 colon 5901. The four zeros are referring to the local machine because we are connecting locally, but this could be a remote IP address as well and the port number of 5901. Start Tiger VNC. And simply specify colon 5901 in the text box and click connect. Wait a few seconds. And there it is. If there's any key to boot from CD or DVD, just like you are installing Windows 10 in a physical machine from physical media. Hit the spacebar, 
At least, that has always been my any key. And then wait for the Windows Setup program to appear. You can safely close the Tiger VNC session and come back to it later. For example, to start Tiger VNC from the terminal with some extra options, here is an extensive command for you. These options are just the command line versions of what you can find in the various options of the VNC Viewer program. For example, Send Clipboard and Accept Clipboard are on the Input tab. Also worth mentioning is the Display tab, where you can specify if the output should be windowed or full screen. Let's close Tiger VNC again. But if you want, you can ignore all those options or play around with them, because the command can be as simple as VNC Viewer colon 5901 ampersand. This time, let's start Tiger VNC with the various options from the command line. And there is the Windows Setup program again. In case you missed the startup phase, for whatever reason, you end up on this screen called the UEFI Interactive Shell. Again, no need to panic, just type reset. This almost instantly closes the graphical output and then immediately connect back to it with Tiger VNC. In this case, to be speedy, I retrieve the earlier command from the command history, up arrow, and then hit enter. And there it is, you can now boot from the dot .iso. You might have to retry this a couple of times rather quickly. Now continue the window setup. And in this case, I will specify a product key later. And then select a Windows Edition. Accept the license and go for custom installation, not an upgrade, because there is nothing to upgrade in this VM. Select the 20 GB virtual disk and click Next. Files are now going to be copied and installed and leave all of this running until it is finished. Obviously, this is time for some coffee. During the installation, the system will reboot a few times and that will return you to the prompt. Just double check if the VM is indeed still running. And then connect to it again to continue the setup. Once inside the Tiger VNC session, by pressing F8, you can open up a context menu where you can easily switch back and forth between a full screen or a windowed view. Eventually, you will arrive at the Windows login screen and your new Windows 10 VM is ready to go. Once the Windows VM is up and running, you can configure networking and an IP address for it and enable remote desktop in Windows. You can then connect with it via the remote desktop or RDP protocol via the default TCP port 3389. This way you are using RDP instead of VNC. Try the R desktop package and the R desktop command for this in FreeBSD. If your firewalling, IP routing and port forwarding are configured properly, you can even connect to your new virtual machine from outside of your test machine or even outside of your home network. But chances are that just connecting to your new VM with Tiger VNC could already be enough. It's just a matter of preference or specific required functionality anyway, because also with Tiger VNC, you can connect to remote IP addresses just like with remote desktop. Now it's been a while since I last installed any Windows version and I was quickly reminded about the mind boggling installation process. Installing Windows 10 or 11 is just agony when you compare it to FreeBSD or any Linux distro. I can install each of them in a few minutes, but here in Windows I have to jump through all sorts of hoops, create an online Microsoft account, and I even need to solve puzzles to help us beat the robots and to make sure that I'm human. Well, I can assure you that I am, and no artificial intelligence was harmed during the production of these videos. The Windows installation even goes so far as throwing several motivational messages on screen, like we are almost there, hang in there, and just a moment we are getting there. I mean, seriously. 
Now, there are many reasons for people to make the switch from Windows to FreeBSD or Linux, and this could very well be one of them. So a small bonus tip for you, if you just can't stand the idea of having to have a forced online account with Microsoft for just using Windows 10, you could remove or comment out the network lines from the configuration file by directly editing it or via the VM configure command. Then when Windows boots, it detects that there are no networking capabilities and it will allow you to create an offline account. That's it. Hope it helped. And if it did, please like the video and keep it up. Until next time. Bye. Thank you.